what's going on guys arrow here and welcome back to another video now in today's video i want to talk to you guys about the possibility of pokemon scarlet and violet getting dlc so by now pokemon scarlet and violet have been out for a little over a month and by now a lot of people have already kind of beaten the main adventure of the game and have found all of the pokemon and caught all of them and all of that and are beginning to think about what could be next in terms of the future and of course in terms of that discussion a big thing that is getting brought up is the possibility of dlc so in this video, we're going to be talking about how Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC could work in terms of why there's going to be DLC, what the DLC could be, when it would be announced, and even exactly how it's going to work. So we'll be going over all of that inside of here. Now real quick before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I am having a special giveaway for the holidays as a thank you for all the support that you guys have given me throughout this year. So I'm going to be giving away a digital download code for any Nintendo Switch game. And all you got to do to enter is click the link below in the description or the pinned comment and you can enter to win any Nintendo Switch game that you want, whether it's a game that came out this year, an old one that's already been out for a while, or even an upcoming game like Tears of the Kingdom in which I'll just give you a pre-order code when it's available. The giveaway is open worldwide and it does end at the end of the month, so definitely click the link below and enter for a chance to win. Now before we get into the discussion about DLC, I do want to say that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet really doesn't even need to have DLC in my opinion. Like this was honestly a Pokemon game where aside from the performance and bugs and stuff like that, if you just look at the content for what you get in the game itself, I do think that it's a pretty complete game in terms of what it has to offer. Like there was a lot of stuff to do in terms of like the three separate little stories that you had, the giant open world to explore and look for all the items and hidden Pokemon and stuff. Like the game itself had a lot of content. Obviously though, it was kind of rushed in terms of getting it out and having all of those glitches and performance issues. That stuff is definitely still inexcusable and should be fixed. But in terms of the content itself, I was actually pretty satisfied and it definitely did feel like it was a solid adventure and that it wasn't something that I was able to finish in just like a day or two. So I actually thought that this was pretty good and I don't even really need to have more content added to this game. But looking at kind of all the stuff that they put into this game and the hints that we've seen and stuff, it's very likely that this game is going to be getting extra content. Now for why there's going to be DLC inside of these games, we've seen for many years, especially if you've played older Pokemon games, that they've always released like a definitive version for a lot of the older generations, which basically was like the more conclusive game that tied together everything and added even more content. So like with Generation 2, we had Pokemon Crystal after Gold and Silver, Emerald after Ruby and Sapphire for Gen 3, and then for Gen 4 after Diamond and Pearl, we had Platinum. But now in an era of DLC and an age where you can just add extra content to games by giving an update out and just being able to have people download it onto their games, you don't really need to release another extra entire game for full price again because you can just release downloadable content that people can purchase and add it right into their games. And we even saw it last generation with Pokemon Sword and Shield and the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass. So it's very likely that they're probably going to be doing a similar type of thing with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as well. And if you guys know Riddler Koo, who's pretty much been teasing us and giving us so much information about this generation before these games even came out, it's very clear to know that he definitely has some inside sources and a lot of information. And he's already kind of alluded to DLC and stuff. And then he's even kind of teased at it where we see this image right here of like a red heart and a purple heart obviously referring to Scarlet and Violet, but then also an orange heart, kind of hinting that there's probably something even more that's going to be coming later. Now for what the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC could be, I've actually seen a lot of different things that people have been talking about, and there's actually a lot of different things that they could do, a lot of things that they've already kind of hinted at. So the first thing that I've seen some people talking about is actually something known as the Manzana Academy. Now if you've taken the champion assessment that you need to do in order to beat the victory road path inside of the games, you guys know that the first question that they ask you is like, which academy are you enrolled in? And it'll tell you like Uva Academy for Pokemon Violet, Naranja Academy for Pokemon Scarlet, but then funnily enough it also says Manzana Academy. Now obviously Naranja means orange in Spanish and Uva means grape in Spanish, but Manzana actually means apple, which is kind of funny because it does kind of make people think that maybe there could be some other like hidden third academy that we're going to learn about with the DLC or maybe this was just kind of a joke option that was put there and it's not actually hinting anything but either way I did see some people talking about this that what if the DLC kind of goes into having like another extra little academy and getting even more information that could be pretty interesting. 
Now, one of the biggest things that we have seen hinted are additional Paradox Pokemon, where we can actually see an image here that's kind of sketched into the Scarlet book and the Violet book, depending on which version of the game that you have. And for Pokemon Scarlet, it's like a Paradox Suicune that we can see right here that's been sketched into the book. And then for Pokemon Violet version, it's like a futuristic Paradox Verizion. So that's making a lot of people think that maybe like the trios are going to be getting special Paradox forms, like how we're going to be seeing Entei, uh, Suicune, and Raikou getting like Paradox past forms and then Verizian, Cobalion, and Terrakion are going to be getting like really cool Paradox future forms inside of Pokemon Violet. It honestly could be something that they could do. We did see the Galarian birds get like something really cool inside of the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC where we had Galarian, Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. So maybe they are going to be doing something with like other trios inside of this DLC. Now these games are also the first ever new generation that doesn't have a third legendary since the generation that they were introduced back in Gen 3. So ever since then we've always had an extra third legendary alongside the two box art legendaries. So like in Gen 3 you have Groudon and Kyogre and then you've got Rayquaza as the extra third legendary. For Gen 4 you've got Dialga and then you've got Palkia and then you've got Garatina as the third legendary. For Gen 5 you've got Zekrom and Reshiram and then you've got Kiram which is the third legendary. For Gen 6 you've got Xerneas and Yavaltal and then you've got Zygarde which is the third legendary and then for Gen 7 we of course have Solgaleo and Lunala, and then Necrozma which is the third legendary, and even last generation with Gen 8 for Sword and Shield, we have Zacian and Zamazenta, but then also Eternatus which is the third legendary, but for Generation 9 with Scarlet and Violet, we don't have a third legendary alongside Coridon and Miraidon, which is kind of really interesting because a lot of people have said, like even before the games came out, a lot of the leakers were saying that the third legendary is going to be a part of the DLC, which I don't know how I really feel about that if they are going to like hold it back behind paid content, but you are going to be getting the third legendary because we kind of have seen an image of it too and kind of what it's hinted at being. So it looks like it's going to be some type of like prism or crystallized type of Pokemon and they kind of allude to it by saying it's going to be like hexagons and stuff. And I don't know, some people have said like theories that maybe it's going to be something alongside like the time machine that we saw at the end of the games. And maybe that's going to be kind of similar to what the third legendary is going to be. But either way, we do need to have a third legendary for this generation. So it's honestly one of the biggest indicators for what we can expect in the DLC. Now when Pokemon Sword and Shield had its expansion pass, they also added like 200 other returning Pokemon back into the games. So after having like the 400 Pokemon in the game day one, you had like about 600-ish Pokemon that were in the game after the DLC. So I would kind of expect them to do a similar type of thing with the DLC for Scarlet and Violet as well. And there's probably going to be some new forms and stuff too. The Sword and Shield DLC did give us stuff like Galarian Slowpoke, so it's possible that we could see something like that with Scarlet and Violet as well. Now apparently there's already been an area that's kind of been data mined for a supposed DLC area. So you can see an image of it right here on screen right now. It's not clear if this is going to be a part of the DLC or if this area is even going to be accessible. But some people are saying that potentially this could be DLC. So maybe this chunk of area, it looks like kind of like a mountain type of area, is going to be a new area that we can explore in the DLC. Now one of the other biggest things that I've seen for what could be in the DLC for these games is that if we take a look at this Paldea region map right here, in the upper right hand corner you can kind of see this area that's been sectioned off and it seems like it's implying that you can actually go there but you can't actually go there in the game itself. So now a lot of people are thinking like maybe this is going to be saved off for DLC, maybe you're actually going to get an update that's going to allow you to go there later, but also if you just kind of know your geography and know kind of what this area is in Spain in real life, this ends up being France which is actually connected to Spain if we put like the Paldea region map and then also like a map of Spain together you can see that it ends up being France and we do have a region already in France which is the Kalos region so now people are having some really insane theories like what if the DLC is going to be something that we're going to be getting with Kalos and we can actually go back and visit Kalos that would be awesome now I know that this is still Game Freak that we're talking about here so there's no way that they're actually going to make like the entirety of Kalos as DLC as cool as that would be there's no way that they're going to do it but even if that area was kind of just like a southern part of Kalos like a new chunk of Kalos that we could explore just for that area of the DLC that would still be really really cool and they could add so many cool little lore things with Kalos there too and some people have even said that next year if we are going to be getting DLC next year like how we did get DLC for Sword and Shield just a year later next year is going to be the 10 year anniversary for Pokemon X and Y and the Kalos region so honestly what better time than to give us a Kalos region DLC than on the 10 year anniversary. 
Now, in terms of when you can expect the announcement for the DLC for these games, the logical expectation would of course be Pokemon Day, because we have seen, like for the last couple of years, a lot of big announcements just seem to happen on Pokemon Day itself. Like in 2021 on Pokemon Day, in February, they announced Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and also Pokemon Legends Arceus. And even this year in 2022, the same Pokemon Day, we got the announcement of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so it's very possible that just next year in February of 2023, that's when we can expect the announcement for the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But then we also kind of have what they did with the DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which was that they actually had a special Pokemon Direct presentation, which happened in January of 2020. And it was like literally on like the 8th of January or something like that. It was very, very early. So some people are thinking like maybe it's also possible that the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet could also be announced just as early where maybe we're just going to get into next month and like within the first two weeks they're just going to announce the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet expansion pass honestly they could do that I mean it was announced very early into Pokemon Sword and Shield also so it wouldn't really surprise me if that's the same thing that they want to do here. And finally, in terms of how this DLC is going to work, I do think that it's going to be very similar to Pokemon Sword and Shields DLC, where there's probably going to be two different expansions that are going to be coming out at two different times in the year. So we're probably going to have like a summer expansion that's going to come out in like June or so, like with the Isle of Armor. And then there's probably going to be like a holiday one that's going to come out in November, and that's going to be like the Crown Tundra. And honestly, with the two things that they've already kind of hinted with the Paradox, Verizian, and Suicune, and then also the third Legendary, they could just make each of those into its own expansion, where one expansion just focuses on the extra Paradox forms, and then the other one focuses on the third Legendary. And both of these can come with like an extra new area and some returning Pokemon, and those could be pretty solid. But yeah, there you go guys, that is pretty much all the information that we have right now about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC and how everything could work. If you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely be sure to click that like button and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this. Would you be excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to get DLC? What would you guys like to see in it? Definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content in the future, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at actual arrows so you can be featured in videos and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo. So definitely be sure to join that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.